in this next video, I just want to summarize what we talked about in terms of chemical bonds into a nice cohesive chart so that we understand the differences and the ways that different chemical bonds form in terms of the chemistry behind them. So the basic way to understand uh, chemical bonds is to form a chart such as this one. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of different things. We're going to look at the electronegativity difference, because remember I said that electronegativity, the differences between two different atoms, determine a lot about the chemical bond. So we'll look at electronegativity differences in one section. Another section is we'll look at the how the electrons are shared. So the electron sharing. Another thing we want to look at is the strength of the overall bond. How strong is the bond? Another thing we want to look at is the type of bond, obviously. This is the most important thing. We want to look at the type. And then lastly, we want to look at an example, a real-life example, to increase the relevancy of our study. So the electronegativity difference. Let's imagine that the electronegativity difference is just a unit. Okay. Let's say I have something that has a close or equal difference. And the electron sharing between these, because the electronegativity is difference is close or equal, is going to be about equal. Makes sense, right? And the strength, therefore, because everybody's sharing, sharing is good, right? You're going to have a nice, strong chemical bond. And the type of bond here is now going to be called nonpolar covalent. What's a good example of this? A good example is O2 oxygen, the oxygen that we breathe. Another one is methane, CH4. And think about it. If you have two oxygen molecules, and let's imagine their electronegativity EN uh, of O. I'm just going to randomly think of a number. It's seven. Let's say electronegativity is seven units, whatever they may be. If you have two oxygens, what do you think the difference between the electronegativities is? Seven minus seven. That difference is close or equal, right? The 7 minus 7, oops, these guys are almost exactly the same. 7 and 7 is the exact same, excuse me. So 7 versus 7 is the same. They have the same electronegativities. They have an equal bond sharing. They have a strong bond, nonpolar covalent. Moving forward, let's just take this out of here. Next type is, if you're not close or equal, you can be, let's say, kind of different. And that kind of difference will be, let's say, less than two electronegativity difference. Just two units. Don't worry about what the actual units are. The electron sharing this situation, we consider it non-equal. Non-equal, unequal. Um, the strength, I'll say it's average. Nothing crazy. And the term for this is polar covalent. Good example of this is something that we talked about in our previous video, H2O. H2O is polar covalent. Specifically, it is a non, it's a polar covalent H bond. So a good way to look at H2O and something that you'll be seeing often is that it's usually represented like this, an O with two H's, and then there's going to be this weird sort of arrow. And this is an electronegativity pulling arrow. Remember, oxygen is an electronegative atom. And to create a hydrogen bond, you need hydrogen plus an EN atom. This is a pretty highly electronegative atom. This is going to create what is known as a partial negative over here. And these guys will now obtain a partial positive. This drawing right here is something you should know because this exemplifies a polar covalent bond. Polar meaning, let's say somebody is going to gain a little bit more. Remember, the electron sharing is non-equal. So guess who's gaining the electrons just a little bit more than the hydrogens? The oxygen, obviously. This guy is polar. He's kind of, we think of polar as negative because polar means cold, right? Think of the, the polar bear that lives in the cold. So this guy, he's a negative atom. And he's going to be having a polar covalent hydrogen bond with the hydrogens right here. So that's our hydrogen bond, specifically our polar covalent bond. The last one we want to talk about is, let's imagine that the difference is much greater than two. Two or even much greater. This time, we're going to say we have very unequal sharing of electrons. Very unequal. Somebody's winning much more than somebody else. And then we can also say that the strength is weak. And specifically, I want to say it's weak in H2O. And we'll see why in just a minute. Type now is going to be ionic. 
This is an ionic bond, and we know that an ionic bond could be represented by something like NaCl, sodium chloride, table salt. Nothing very difficult here. So what happens literally in this situation is that we have Na, and that's going to be our positive. It's going to be combined with Cl, and Cl is our negative. And Cl has seven valence electrons. I'm going to draw them actually right here. And these are its seven valence electrons. And sodium, in this situation, only has one, let's say, extra positive electron right here. The chlorine, because it's so electronegative, because remember, electronegativity increases in the periodic table like this, it's right around here. The chlorine is going to hog this electron and bring it right about here, pretty darn close to it. And notice, two, four, six, eight, boom! It's almost got that valence, that complete eight valence electron. So now we're going to give it a negative because it's gained a little bit of that extra electron. This ionic bond right here is weak, and it's especially weak in H2O. That's why if you put water in here, it's going to dissolve these two. You're going to dissolve the salt. So this is a good summary of what the bonds, chemical bonds that we see in biology are like in terms of their sharing, their strength, their electronegativity difference, their type, and an example of them.